Hi, thanks for the great discussion yesterday. I'll be the first to admit I did not lay out a center line and measure these out, but when I looked at this in terms of setting it up, um, and then what you guys did last night, I thought, wait a minute, there's just no way I would have thought this was a straight dog path to this backside. Um, in my mind, this jump was significantly um, pushed this way, which made getting the front face of this jump more likely, making this a harder sequence. If this jump had been over here, absolutely, um, then I could have gone straight to push around that backside. But in my mind, looking at this map, I thought um, the best way to do is to either do across here or here. If I wanted to maintain a dog arc, that the dog is basically jumping this way and around. Also, too, my goal was to reward a stopped contact and the best way for me to do that is to do a front cross here. So I didn't want to be on the other side of that the obstacle. So um, ideally, I think I, what I would do again to see if it was faster uh, on Coach's Eye or something is come up here and do a blind or a front to push this and then come down here to reward that and get, like you said, decelerate to get this very challenging sequence for a, a big strided dog. Um, but again, maybe I set this over too far, or maybe you guys set this over too far, or we both did. Um, but you know what would have been really fun? Um, would have been to do a sequence where the dog came maybe and did a backside here, up to here, and then move the A-frame over to here. That would have been a fun, fun sequence. Having the, the backside four obstacles away definitely created... Um, a more challenging um, sequence than having the backside here and surping down to there. Anyway, lots of fun. Thanks for the discussion. Can't wait to see those um, figure eight circles. Thanks. Bye. Good luck at Sino Sports.